And we welcome you back to the Steve Malzberg Show. It's time for the Malzberg Panel. Joining us is Kurt Schlichter, trial lawyer, columnist at IJ Review and townhall.com. And Christopher Hahn, Democratic strategist and syndicated radio host. All right, gentlemen, I want to start, of course, um, as we know the scenario. Um, Hillary has accused Donald Trump of being a sexist, uh, rightly or wrongly. She made those accusations. Uh, at the same time, she announced that next week, uh, Bill Clinton will be hitting the campaign trail for her, her secret weapon. Well, la dee da, Trump had warned her and said, be careful who you're calling a sexist. Uh, your husband's got some problems, got some history. Uh, and there are women who say, you have some history. Um, so this was broached about a week or so ago on CNN before it became more mainstreamed as it is now by Kurt, who was on with Don Lemon. And uh, here's how some of that went. Bring Hillary Clinton's actions into it. Don't bring well, her I, husband's I, I, actions I'd into like it. I'd like to bring Hillary Clinton's actions into it. Absolutely. When she was the, given the choice between standing with a serial sexual abuser and All right, with Kurt. Women stop, violated, stop, 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 stop. That's not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. Can we stop that, please? It is not fair. It is not fair. It is a low blow. It is the, yes, I want to end it. This is the lowest of the low. And it has no, nothing to do with Hillary no. Clinton. Hey, it is just a cheap to me, shot it's that. To of can other you Americans. please stop? Can we stop? Can we, can we cut him off, please? Than, uh, Thank you. Donald can we Trump end this? Thank you. Yeah, and, and here's here's what makes this all worse. I tweeted out last night when it happened. Last night, Don Lemon is on, and there's another panel, and someone's trying to bring up Bill Clinton, and he said, you know. I believe, he said, my nieces go to school and they learned all about Bill Clinton and his women. And the guests kept, oh, I forget who the guest was. Guests kept going on and on and interrupting. Gosh, I wish I could remember who it was. And, and said, wait a minute, you're telling me they teach your nieces in school about Bill Clinton's? Well, oh, yes, they know all about him. I said, are you kidding me? So, so, Kurt, what did you think when you were being shut up? And now that you know that he went from there where it's unacceptable to talk about it, that, oh, yeah, my nieces learn about it in school. So which is the real Don Lemon? <laughs> I, I, I think I caught the real Don Lemon with me, Steve. Look, uh, I'm a trial lawyer, so it's nothing personal when people try and shut me up when... It's usually some along the lines of, objection hurts my case. And that's exactly what I got from Don Lemon. Uh, look, the mainstream media wants to put Hillary Clinton's uh, disgraceful track record of supporting a serial sexual abuser, Bill Clinton, off limits. And, and I'm not going to be put off limits, and millions of Americans aren't. And, and God bless him, Donald Trump won't let it be, uh, happen. So I think, uh, you know, I think that this is an important discussion. I think Hillary Clinton's record uh, as regards to her husband's disgusting and disgraceful behavior, which is not disputed. Everyone agrees he did it. Mm -hmm. All right, I, what, 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 Christopher, Christopher, is, yeah. Christopher, is this, is this fair game? Well, if he's out there campaigning, I guess you could bring that up about him. I mean, people heard it ad nauseum. I, for one, think holding a husband, a, a wife accountable for the sins of their husband in a campaign is in and of itself kind of sexist. But he was president of the United States. And quite frankly, this has been good for both of them. Nobody's talking about any of the other Democratic candidates. Nobody's talking about Bernie Sanders right now. The, the left is eating this up, and the right is totally eating this up as well. Donald Trump couldn't have played this better if he wanted but to. But Christopher, to how, how can it be? First, Christopher, first of all, uh, there are accusations by women that Hillary threatened them to be quiet. We know she said terrible things about at least Monica Lewinsky. So how could this possibly be good for Hillary? I, I, I just failed to understand that. And by the way, there's a whole generation, a whole generation of young people that Hillary would love in her camp that have never heard about any of this, well, notwithstanding you know, what Don Lemon it, says. It, we're you know, gonna talk wait, wait, Kurt, 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 let Christopher go. It, Kurt, Kurt. If we're going to talk about the 90s, we're going to talk about all the 90s. We're going to talk about the 22 million jobs created <laughs> under Bill Clinton. We're going to talk about me going to Woodstock in 1994 and having a really good time. You should have been there. We're going to talk a lot about a lot of great things that happened in the 90s. And if we want to go back to the 90s, great. Right, Kurt, 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 go we'll ahead. Go Kurt, back go ahead. Kurt, go ahead. I'm ready. I'm eager. But look, and, and of course, now Christopher, you're a wonderful guy, but I, I, I want to point out your little me. And your meme is, oh, you're blaming Hillary for what her husband did. Well, I, I could do that because she chose to stay married to him. But what I'm really saying is 
She supervised, controlled, and was responsible for the disgusting and disgraceful backlash and trashing of the women that Bill Clinton abused. That is on Hillary. Solely on like, Hillary. You know, this is, you know, this is old news. And, it, and this was tried in 1998. This was tried. And in the, in the midterm elections under, under President uh, Clinton in his second midterm election, he picked up seats because this was the Republican tactic. If they want to go down that road, I'm all for it. Look. Look, let me explain something. Guys, 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 one at a time. Let let, let Christopher let Christopher finish real quick, Christopher. As as a partisan, I hope they continue down this course because it's a loser. A complete and total loser. Kurt. And I really think that Donald Trump is doing everything he can to make sure that Hillary Clinton is the Democratic nominee, just as I think Hillary's doing the same thing to make sure Donald Trump is the Republican nominee. Donald Trump will not be elected president. All right, Kurt. If you keep going down this road, you know. Kurt, go ahead. Kurt? Oh, I'm here. Yeah, go ahead. All right, here's the deal. Here's here's what I see. Here's what I here guys, we'll finish this up with me. Here's what I see. I see if if it is Trump and Hillary, I see the the women coming forward and making commercials at the very least. Uh, uh, for Donald Trump uh, talking about right. Hillary. I see the victims' family members who were there when the coffins came home from Benghazi who have already called Hillary a liar and said that she told us they were going to get the guy who made the video. And when Stephanopoulos asked her, did you tell them that, she said no. So she's calling them liars. I see a video on that. I see Hillary in so much trouble. I see her praising Islam and Muslims that they have nothing to do with terror. I think she's toast when she runs against Donald Trump. But that's just my opinion. We got a lot more to talk about on round two, and it has nothing to do with Hillary or Trump. Don't go away. At the point where they suddenly came together, both Tamir and the rookie officer were no doubt frightened. If we put ourselves in the victim's shoes, as prosecutors and detectives try to do, it is likely that Tamir, whose size made him look much older and who had been warned that his pellet gun might get him into trouble that day, either intended to hand it over to the officers or show them it wasn't a real gun. But there was no way for the officers to know that because they saw the events rapidly unfolding in front of them from a very different perspective. All right. Uh, joining us on the panel once again, Kurt Schlichter and Christopher Hahn. Uh, of course, uh, that's the Tamir Rice case in Cleveland. A 12-year-old who was uh, gunned down. Uh, he had a gun that uh, no one knew was a toy gun. Uh, after a 911 call, had talked about him menacing the public, and cops pulled up, and he was reaching into his waistband to pull out that gun, and uh, they shot him. Uh, Christopher, uh, justice or not? Well, you know, I think we could have seen a trial here. I think there was enough evidence to go to trial. Whether or not he would have been guilty or not, that remains to be seen. But I do think that the community would have been well served by a trial. I'm an attorney. I know uh, we have another attorney on the panel here. And I I think reasonable people could disagree whether we should have gone to a trial or not. I, I for one, think a trial would have been warranted here. Well, you know, Kurt, I don't think it's about justice for the community. I think it's about justice for the accused. And obviously the grand jury was convinced that the police acted within police guidelines. I, I think you're right. And that's the purpose of a grand jury is to determine where there's probable cause uh, for a jury to find uh, uh, guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. And they didn't hear. Now, I, I think, look, I, I wasn't on the grand jury. Uh, I think there were tactical errors that the police made, but I think that goes a lo- that's a long way from criminal liability. Uh, this case is not done. There are going to be administrative remedies. There's going to be civil proceedings. Um, Federal investigation. Right. Well, I, I don't think there was a racial. I think no, that's, no, it doesn't have you know, to be. They'll, they'll that and, and never, never comes out. They'll just because, do it look, anyway. This is a cop who rolled up on a, a big kid who had what looked like a gun, whether he should have acted, whether he should have, uh, engaged the uh, 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 Tamir Rice the way he did. I think that's uh, that, that's really a good good issue for the civil courts, and I think that's where justice will be had. I'm just heartbroken over the whole thing for the Rice family, uh, for the family of the police officer, and I think one of the big answers is better training for our policemen. Well, I think yeah. the train. I think the training was appropriate when a suspect is pulling a, what you think is a gun, uh, uh, and you think he's pulling it out. You shoot. I mean, there's no, well, there's there, no ifs, ands, or buts. You shoot. He should have gone as close as he did 
whether he should have taken more time. Uh, well, more distance, if he had taken two more, if he had taken two, uh, you know what, Kurt? If he had taken two more seconds and it was a real gun and, and a guy who had uh, malintent, we'd have a dead cop. But let's move on. Uh, well, if, if he had rolled up that close to a guy with a gun, yeah. Uh, I, right. I probably would have rolled up. You know, I'm a military guy, so not exactly law enforcement. So I prefer to have a little distance between me and the guy I'm engaging. All right, let's move on to uh, let, let's move on to the affluenza case, the so-called affluenza case, and uh, this uh, this bum, this now 18-year-old bum who killed four people and injured nine, driving drunk, and got off, convinced the jury he didn't know right from wrong because he was rich. Um, and then he's pro 10 years probation, no jail time for killing four people. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and, and guess what? He, is, he ran allegedly with his mom to Mexico. They're coming back now. They got caught. She could face 10 years in prison, and he could wind up serving, we hope, 10 years in prison. But if he goes to juvenile, he gets out when he's 19 next April. And I don't right. know if there's a provision uh, uh, for, for letting him serve uh, as an adult. Well, I think the kid needs to get the book thrown at him, and the parents, quite frankly, the mother needs to get the book thrown at him, her as well. I mean, the kid's on probation. He can't do that time. He's got to escape to Mexico. He's living in a multi-million dollar mansion. Yep. He can't do that time. It's ridiculous. Yep. Kurt, Kurt, I hope you know, Kurt, 15, 15 seconds, Kurt. Okay. Well, on, seconds. on probation. They caught him out drinking and stuff, and that's why he ran, because he was going to be held The video. They found the that. video of him. Yeah, yeah. Right. All right, See, guys. Look, there has to be one law for all Americans. Guys, we will continue continue this maybe next year happy new year to both of you i appreciate it uh, christopher and kurt up next tom delay don't go away without delay president obama may have met with world leaders in paris to discuss climate change but it appears as if he's got plans of his own the new york times has reported that president obama is planning to implement massive climate change regulation without ratification from Congress. And this means the president's abusing his executive power to funnel global warming, quote unquote, money at will and wherever he wants. But is there even solid evidence behind global warming's claims? Former Reagan White House advisor and NASA scientist John Casey says no in the compelling book, Dark Winter. Inside Dark Winter, you'll see the NOAA satellite data that proves that the Earth is actually cooling. Casey exposes the global warming myth and presents you with the hard facts and figures that unmask the annual $22 billion money grab. Get John Casey's revealing book and DVD absolutely free with our special offer. That's a savings of more than $35. You can claim this special free offer by clicking on Newsmax.com slash global warming or by calling our toll-free number 800-780-3417. That's 800-780-3417.